Hello, 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 and welcome back to my CNC router. In this episode, we're going to make all the rest of the parts for this machine and make a test fit for everything so that we can see if there's any more issues, kind of alignment or stuff like that to be taken care of before doing the final assembly. And if you're new to my channel, this channel is all about designing and building this 15 meter ocean going sailboat. And the journey is just about to begin. And this tool, the CNC router, you can see here, is kind of massive and its purpose is to manufacture most of the parts for this boat. So that's one side of the story here. If you are interested to see how this thing has evolved, you can check out the previous videos from up there. This thing is 1.5 meter wide and 3 meters long and it should be able to cut a full-size plywood sheet available here in Europe. It's all my own design. I have done 3D model and uh, cut and manufactured all these parts. And uh, yeah, it hasn't been really cheap. I will do wrap up video later on all the prices and stuff, but there's a steel frame, aluminum moving parts, two motors on each side and uh, one motor here to the X and fourth here to do the Z axis movement. There will be a water cooled 2.2 kilowatt spindle here and uh, it's looking very promising so far. If you want to support this channel, of course, watching these videos is the first thing to do. But the second thing you can check out is t-shirt store down below and of course the Patreon page as well. It would be very nice to have more patrons and get this channel really growing. And uh, there's going to be interesting videos coming soon when we get this thing up and running. But yeah, let's go back in the metal workshop to make the final parts and uh, then we'll come back here and put this all together. I'm here at the plate and trying to do the rest of the parts. Um, let's see here. Uh, so I have these belt wheels, which should have a different size of holes that they currently have. So I have to make this smaller one to fit this motor and the bigger one should have a slightly bigger hole to fit into this axle. So we have to make bigger holes for these and of course the shafts for this hole and for that hole as well. So a bunch of things to do. So this is basically just making a hole with a drill bit. I will use first 13.5 millimeter one and then I will change it to this expensive special hard steel blade which is brand new 40 millimeter so yeah with this one the hole will be perfect These two wheels are done. Let's jump to the next one, which is this one. According to plans, it should be 16 millimeter hole. For now, it is only 12. So, slightly bigger hole than this one. Here we have 16 millimeters holes in both of these. And they are now waiting for the shafts to go in. Yeah. Now this section is done. Now we do the other section for this pinion. It should be 10 millimeters. Right, this is done. Now I'll change the blade here for a cutting blade. This edge right there to make it fit properly to the bearing. Mm -hmm. 
and now we need to take the shaft a bit more out to cut it in length. Like so. And this is the second shaft to accept the bronze pushing. I ended up spending two whole days in the metal workshop and it was so intensive that I didn't have time to explain everything. Anyway, here we are making key slots for the pulleys and also the pinions. It was quite a straightforward job, but my uncle had a quite a quick pace doing that. For this second shaft it was necessary to make threads in them to accept the bolt that will hold the motor mounts down. Tapping threads in steel was surprisingly hard compared to the aluminium. Then we made a bunch of threaded holes for different parts for these pulleys and the pinions and the bolt screw mounting doodad. These are just for holding them in place with this small nut that will go into them. And the final results. These are the two shafts that will go into these pulleys that have keyholes and mounting nut hole in them. These are the pinions that also have a key slot. This is the second shaft completed. It will accept the bronze pushing. The smaller pulley received a key slot and a mounting screw as well. And I managed to make new holes for these bolt screw mounts as well. I was a little worried that we couldn't use them, but now they fit perfectly. And one of the last jobs was to cut a key slot into these shafts as well. We used regular drill press with this precise mounting doodad. And last but not least, we made mounting holes for this spindle holder. It was surprisingly difficult to hold it down for making this accurate enough. When all the parts were ready, I returned to the machine and started to put everything together. The first job was to mount the motor mounting shaft thing. It was tight snug fit. Then the Teflon plate and the mount itself with the front pushing. And finally, the nut to hold it down. And it looked just like it should. And lastly, the bolt for the spring tensioning. Then I installed the shaft to the bearings.
pinion and the pulley and it was quite a good fit and same for the second one Then it was time to put everything together to the frame. This part is the thing that I did off camera from a scrap aluminium piece. It is meant to accept the spring. So yesterday I spent a long day doing all the rest of the stuff. Now everything seems to fit quite well. I've now assembled this thing here and now you can see when I push it forward it goes with the rack and pinion. Here is a spring tensioning system. I have these old springs but they are too long. I have to buy shorter ones and there's little to no backslash I can feel right now so it feels very good. I'm now going to continue test assembling everything and if everything goes well we can uh, take it all apart and do the final assembly afterwards. Okay, about tapping holes with these tools. This is a cheap tapping tool that you can buy in every hardware store. And uh, yeah, there is a difference like a day and night with the professional tools I used back in the metal workshop. This one tends to clog immediately. You can't really use electric drill to tap the hole. It just stucks there, especially with aluminium and the Big difference here is that this has just these grooves and the professional tool, it has a spiral cutting blade there and there's kind of one continuous uh, thing coming off the blade. But this does kind of uh, dust and debris that goes in there and it stucks immediately. So, well, I'm just doing a few holes here, but if I were doing dozens of, I would really invest a proper tapping tool.
the sensor will come here as the gantry comes on this end and uh, there's holes already here that have threads in them but the problem is that the sensor has a, a finer threads than the threads on that so I have to drill the dreads off and uh, put this in. It's not a problem because this sensor has uh, two nuts on it and it will just fit on the hole. It doesn't need the threads. But yeah, small issue. So now I'm adding hole here for the sensor and it should be located so that the sensor will sense the steel part of this uh, rail carriage. Fingers crossed. Drill bit is new so it should work fine. If I mess this up I have another chance on that side. I think the drill bit moved. Uh oh, yeah. The drill bit moved just a bit. On this side, it seems to be okay. You can probably see that knot is between this. Ah, yeah. But I don't know if this matters because you're probably never going to drive the axis right against the top here. So. Maybe it's okay. Only if the sensor itself detects the carriage properly. But yeah, now there's a hole. The missing hole. One of them done. I also marked up one missing hole right here. There should be a small bolt going through. And uh, the bolt head is on this side. And it will go down into this hole. Another sensor is facing up, so it will detect the lower point. That should be okay. I just need proper drill bit and a thread tool to make this hole. I'm not doing that yet. But okay, there is a, this sensor right there, another sensor down there. There is a sensor holes right here and on the other end as well. And they will detect a bolt which is going to be there. Uh, but the big country sensors are still missing. On the plans I have this plate right here that has the sensor that will go and detect this metal part of the carriage. But it turned out that this end of the beam is not straight enough. So I really can't do the end plate from aluminium because well it wouldn't fit. So I think instead I'm going to do those from thick plywood and I'm going to do them with this machine as a first job. So we'll get in back into those later. Until then there will be no sensors on these ends, but I will be very careful anyway. And I also did some measurements for these power chains. One is going to be on this side. I just need some brackets to mount it in here and the other one is going to be behind here and I need brackets there as well so those are on the list now, nothing special about that. Powering in spot will be kind of middle here so every cable will go right here through that chain in the here and there it will split on this motor and that motor and one cable will go maybe through the profile or behind it somewhere on the other end to that motor back there and then of course with the chain it will supply power for the z-axis motor and the spindle itself and uh, there also will be those cooling lines which you can see see over there so there's a cable going and 
the, the water coolant back and forth. Yeah, that's about it. Not much, not much. I have to take these motors off to solder the cable connectors on those to connect everything properly. Pretty big job because there is uh, four cables for driving the motors. And if I remember correctly, there's six cables for the sensor here. So, yeah, and every one of those has to be soldered on this end, on the other end, and on the other end of that cable. So, yeah, <laughs> plenty of soldering to do. Okie dokie, here is the result and uh, everything seems to fit together surprisingly well. There is really no parts that is misaligned or done wrong or anything like that. This is kind of a test assembly now and uh, all the screws should be in their places now. And the uh, motors are all in. It moves very smoothly like that. And after I put the bolts on the either side of this profile, there is really just a tiny bit of flex with this gantry and it doesn't really matter because there's motors on the either end so everything looks very very good right now and uh, in the next episode I believe uh, I will take this all apart again and put a thread lock in all of the screws and that way make a final assembly of this gantry. And of course, these uh, rails hadn't been aligned yet, so we have to do that as well. And kind of the last thing to do is to align those longer rails. And then it's just <laughs> kind of doing all the electric work, which are going forward as well. If you have any comments, questions, ideas, or just to say hello, please put your comment down below. And don't forget to press the like. And uh, if you're interested to support this project, go and check the Patreon page on the t-shirt store. At this point, I don't know if I have got new patrons already, but if there are, they will be listed somewhere around here. And uh, we will continue with the CNC router and the boat design and things soon. So remember to subscribe and we will see you. Bye.